But I want to ask you, James, why are perhaps the three editors of the only really three publications in the alternative media, and I'm talking about disobedient media, the socialist website, and consortium news, are the ones writing most, I think, about Assange and WikiLeaks on a continuous basis, pointing out to our readers what a crisis this is, how any day he could be out of that embassy. Uh, and, and this is a major, major story, but we're the only ones covering. Why is it, James, that the rest of the alternative media, um, whether left or right, are not covering this story the way we are? I mean, I think I mean, the silence will be broken by the development of, a, of an independent political movement from below uh, that forces the silence to be ended. You know, the, uh, the mobilisation of the working class is the critical issue. I mean, certainly coming in the wake of the rallies, our preoccupation will be that question. Uh, you know, the work that is conducted uh, at, at workplaces, at university campus, campuses, among students and so on, to bring them in to a political struggle in which the defence of democratic rights and the freedom of Julian Assange have to be central questions. They're not. You can't separate the struggle over the great social and social issues of jobs, of wages, of education, healthcare, against war, against climate change, and so on, from the defence of democratic rights. Democratic rights are crucial to the social struggle. And that's why they are being attacked in every country, why they're being eviscerated. They want, you know, we are, we are living through, a, you know, dangerous times. You know, there are dictatorial tendencies underway internationally in the so-called democratic states. And the persecution of WikiLeaks has been at the forefront of it. Democratic rights includes the right to information, to know what your governments are doing. And we, we saw that poll in Australia of 90% of the people supported WikiLeaks and Assange after that interview uh, on 60 Minutes with Pamela Anderson. So who, how is the government and the media, they are keeping a lid on the population, James, the 90% who support Julian Assange. That lid is being kept on in various ways that you can explain better than I can, but I think economic pressure is certainly one of them, but, and, and not giving voice to people. Uh, because the, the 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 airwaves are bottled up by people who have dispensed with Julian Assange for um, any number of reasons. How do you burst that? How do you break that lid that's being forced on the will of the people by government, big business, and their stooges in the press, really? I'd like to actually add, um, in response to what Joe asked you as well, just add that I think that there's a problem across um, not just establishment press, but also independent media when it comes to a story like Wiki the you know ongoing uh, persecution of WikiLeaks and Julian Assange. Um, when you have something like Assange being gagged, which it's almost been a year, it's coming up on a year since he was silenced, um, it, it's really difficult to continually report on that when there's, uh, you know, maybe little new news on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, you know, it's the same problem that's going to be faced by supporters of Chelsea Manning when, it, you know, maybe a month from now, if nothing significant has changed, there may be very little coverage of the issue. That doesn't mean that it's any less important or any less worthy of a fight against, uh, you know, the imprisonment of Chelsea or the, the gagging of Julian Assange. But I think that is one factor in why, whether it's independent or, you know, maybe maybe more so independent media than establishment press, but I think that's one factor. I was certainly struck by the uh, warmth that was given uh, when we made clear that the SEP will will defy the, 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 the silence which prev pre pre prevails around Julian Assange and make this an election, an election issue. But they are not going to conduct an election in Australia, uh, most likely on May 18th, without Julian Assange being raised. Uh, and political parties and candidates will be made to answer what their position is. Uh, I made the point at the Melbourne rally, look, we don't have any illusions. This is going to be difficult. You know, it's already been, you know, Julian has already been, as we all know, he's been imprisoned inside, arbitrarily detained in, in Ecuador for approaching now seven years. But I think what we derive our confidence, if you want to put it in that use that word, what we derive our confidence from is that it is Cohen, the struggle for free Assange and Manning coincides with the ever greater verification 
in the day-to-day -day struggles of masses of people that that is the great social force. The working class is the great social force that can bring about change. And it is on the move. You know, look at the we situation. see the yellow vests. Yeah. We see the yellow vests in France as well. Yeah, that, of course. I mean, it's very confused. It doesn't have, you know, a very clear political line or perspective. But yes, so that's the, you know, there are enormous processes underway. And I, what we, our aim, the aim of the SEP and the World Socialist website is to, is to bring into this enveloping, developing movement a political perspective. Uh, it's not enough just to protest in that sense as what the Yellow Vests are doing. It, you know, it does require the working class actually establishing its own control over society, its own workers' governments, the implementation of socialist policies, um, which Joe referred to 90% support for Assange. Well, among young people in the United States, in Britain, Australia, there's 60 70% support for socialism. The climate change strikes by high school children yesterday. I mean, one of the points we made, I mean, 70% of all global emissions come from 100 large transnational companies. Exactly. You know, the public ownership and, you know, the necessary measures can be taken to drastically reduce carbon emissions. That support for socialism amongst the young, um, you'd have to attribute some of that to alternative media and of the top of the list is what WikiLeaks has done. It's certainly not been the corporate media that's encouraging that point of view. Also, the economic realities of 30 years of neoliberalism, uh, people finally waking up to it and really fed up with what's happened to their lives that they used to be in the middle class. And that's long in the rear view mirror. Uh, and there was one moment in Trump's State of the Union address I thought was the most chilling and what was a very surreal event, in my opinion. Um, is when he got up there and very, very angrily, nastily said, America will never be a socialist country. Well, it will. <laughs> That's the point. I mean, the, whatever, what does Trump represent? What do the Democrats represent? They represent an oligarchy, a tiny corporate financial oligarchy, which has enriched itself at the expense of the American working people and the working people of the world. You know, Wall Street rises to the extent that workers suffer. No question. Wall Street rises to the extent that ruthless wars, neo-colonial operations are, are, are carried out and people are fed up with it. They are sick of it. Um, you know, uh, the, at the moment, the, its most clear expression is the, is, is the rebellious sentiment amongst, uh, among teachers. Uh, we've made the point, you know, I mean, one of the factors why you have such resistance emerging among educators, among teachers, is because they are the ones who, who deal with every day in the classrooms the consequences of the impoverishment of millions upon millions of people. You know, they're the ones dealing with children who haven't eaten properly, who can't clothe themselves properly. Um, you know, so the, as well as dealing with their own... Uh, you know, lack of wages, graduating from college with staggering levels of debt and then, you know, going to a job that barely allows them to meet their housing costs, let alone pay back their debts. So there are vast processes underway and, you know, the SEP in the United States, uh, you know, which will be at the forefront and, sorry, is at the forefront of the efforts to develop independent political struggle by American workers. And as I keep coming back to that, the banner of Assange, the banner of Manning, the banner of democratic rights will be written into that into those struggles. Um, as it, you, know, you cannot, you, you know, you won't have socialism without democracy, and you're not going to have democracy, frankly, without socialism. And the protection of the plutocratic status quo, no question. Um, and I think you know, it, it has been mind blowing for myself. Um, you know, coming from the Australian education system as a high school student. And then coming to see the level of debt and the level, as you say, of impover impoverishment when it comes to the public education system in the U.S. and the way in which even just in the space of one generation, you went from, um, you know, families that were able to send their children to college now not um, not being able to do that without hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt. 
um, it, it's, it's um, I think that aspect of things specifically, and obviously medi uh, medical care, et cetera, is unique to the US. And I think that's definitely a contributing factor in the, the reason that so many young people and people across the country have, have turned towards um, you know, supporting socialist policies where before, maybe in the last 10 or 20 years, that would have been a word that had a lot of stigma around it. So, I mean, one of our speakers in Melbourne was the representative of, of a committee we're formed, the Committee for Public Education. And you know, she spoke very, very strongly about the relationship. I mean, education, education rights in Australia have been torn to shreds. Um, Privatisation, I mean, you call them, you've got the charter school process in the US. In Australia, we have just the open promotion of private schools. Um, and, and she made the, the important point. I mean, the relationship of education and critical media of WikiLeaks, you know, is that, you know, um, you know, where one of the great efforts of an educator is to provide the, is to provide those they're educating with the truth, with a truthful account of what's going on in the world. And you don't get it from the corporate media. Um, and so, you know, the relationship between the, 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 the struggle for the freedom of Assange, the defence of WikiLeaks, the defence of the freedom of Manning, the defence of the expansion. I mean, what I suppose, the, coming back to the issue Joe raised about independent media, I mean, what, what do we have to fight for? It's where, you know, instead of just being in the thousands or tens of thousands, that millions of people begin to derive their day-to-day -day orientation from the World Socialist website, consortium news, disobedient media, and so on, instead of... Um, Fox News, you know, CNN, what's that thing that Matt Owl's on? MSNBC. MS, yes, MSNBC. Yes. MSD, MSDNC. Yes. <laughs> well, and I have to add um, the new Matilda to the, um, you know, trio of, of outlets that do cover Assange regularly. There's a brilliant series by uh, Dr. Lisa Johnson on the psychology of getting Assange, which if people viewing this and listening to this haven't read it, they should absolutely go look it up. So, and and we are going to have her on as a guest, I should add, once that fourth part is out. That's what she told me down in Sydney anyway. So part four Fantastic. is Fantastic. It four is out. Is it out. today. It published today. Yes, oh, all right. Well, hope, we're going to have her next week, hopefully, yes. to talk about that four-part series.